everyone, Casel Man Rules here. Welcome to another video tutorial. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to install Fedora Linux onto your computer. Fedora Linux is very similar to Ubuntu Linux, which I've showed you how to install in the past. It's a little bit more advanced because it doesn't have as much of a support community online, but the learning curve is very similar. So, uh, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and, first of all, get the CD image, then to show you guys how to burn it to a CD, and then how to boot to the CD, and then install it from there. The first thing you need to do, like I said, is to get the CD image. You'll go ahead and go to fedoraproject.org, it's the official website of the Fedora operating system. Uh, go ahead over here on the left side and click Get Fedora, and you'll be brought to a page like this. Go ahead and click Show Me All Download Options in one page, and you'll be brought to a page like this. You have a couple of options when it comes to how you want to install Fedora. You can either install it from a DVD or multiple CDs, or from a single live CD. The live CD version is very similar to how Ubuntu does it. Fedora also includes a lot of the software is already included, so when you install it's already there. Otherwise, with the live CD, you would have to download it once you've already got it installed. So if you have a DVD or multiple CDs you're willing to dedicate to this project, go ahead and do that. If you only want to use one CD, go ahead and get the live version go over here. If you don't already have um, a CD burning software, go ahead and get Image Burn. You can choose any of the mirrors right here. The links to both of these pages, by the way, will be in the description. So go ahead and click Download Now, and you can download the installer and install it. So after you've completed both of those tasks, now we need to actually burn the CD image to the CD or the DVD, depending on your situation. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Image Burn. And when you're here, you need to click Write Image File to Disk. Click this little button to browse for the file, and browse to where you downloaded it. Here. After you select the CD image that you've downloaded in Image Burn, you can go ahead and click this button right down here to burn it to the drive. I've already done it to save time, so you don't need to do that, but go ahead and wait for that to complete. After you're done, you can now close Image Burn, and you're ready to insert the disk into your drive and restart your computer. I'll meet you guys at the point right after your computer is started up, and you should see the Fedora loading screen. Alright guys, this is the screen that you're going to reach right after you start up your computer. Now you have a couple of options here. You can either install or upgrade an existing system, which I'm assuming you don't have since you're watching this tutorial. Or you can install a system with a basic video driver. That's what we're going to want to use. For future reference, you can also rest and install the system, boot from a local drive, or check your memory for errors. So we're going to go ahead and select Install System with Basic Video Driver and press Enter. At this point, you may get this message asking you if you want to test the medium in the event that there's errors and you have the improper image. We're going to go ahead and skip that for this tutorial. The Fedora System Installer is called Anaconda and it's going to begin loading right here. Alright, this is the opening screen for the Anaconda Fedora installer. Go ahead and select the next. Go ahead and select the language you're going to want to use for the installation process. I'm going to select English. And now select the appropriate keyboard type for your system. I'm also going to choose English. You may get this message asking you if you want to reinitialize the drive, which may be necessary depending on if you already have data on there or depending on the type of drive that you have. So if this comes up, go ahead and click Reinitialize the Drive. Make sure that you're willing to do this though, and you may lose any data on the drive. Just keep this the same right here, that's not necessary to change. And right here you have uh, the option to choose your time zone. That's fine for me. Now you need to type in the root password for your system. So this is going to be your password for pretty much everything. So select a password that you're comfortable with using that you'll make sure that you remember. It will ask you if you use a dictionary word if you would like to continue with this because it is a sort of leak in security. But I'm going to go ahead and use that for the first piece of this tutorial. Now is the option where you can choose how you want to install Fedora on your system. You have several options from the list. You can either use the entire drive, which I'm assuming you don't want to do because it's going to be sort of dual booting with Windows is the idea. You can also replace an existing Linux system, shrink the current system, use free space, or create a custom layout. We're going to go ahead and do that. After that, you can click next, and you'll get to this uh, menu right here. For this tutorial, I have a completely blank drive of about 8 gigabytes. So what we're going to want to do for you is to shrink your Windows partition, so that's going to probably take up your entire drive. Just select that partition, click edit, and then shrink it down to a size that is not greater than the size that the Windows already is. In other words, if you have a certain amount of data on your Windows drive, don't shrink it down below that amount. 
so just shrink it down to the point where you're going to be comfortable have enough data, uh, space left to store more data but make sure that's not before the amount of data that you already have in that drive so you'll have an amount of open space to go ahead and click that space and click new now you have the option to create a partition so you can go ahead and select the mount point I'm going to go ahead and do the root and now you have a couple of options, such as how you want to, or such as the file system type, things like that. So I'm assuming that you're going to not want to have multi another partition just for the grub bootloader. So go ahead and select ext3 because the ext4 cannot be booted from at this time. Um, so go ahead and select the size of the partition that you want it to be. You can make it the entire size of that open space or however large it will fit. You can go ahead and hold down the up button until it reaches the point where it can't go any larger. Or you can go ahead and enter in the amount of megabytes that you know space left on the drive. So for me it's 8189 megabytes. Go ahead and leave this however you want, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it like that. Of course to be primary position you may want to do that, and I don't feel the need to encrypt it. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and it has that right there, and we can go ahead and click Next. At this time, you'll be asked after you click next, if you wish to write the changes to disk, go ahead and click that. Once you get to this page, it's going to ask you how you would like to set up the bootloader. You have a couple of options here. Important thing to do if you wish to boot into Windows is to click add and then name it Windows or whatever you want to call it. And then click on the partition that your Windows partition is on. Otherwise, you're going to have to boot into Fedora and then edit settings in there, which is a little bit of a pain. You go ahead and add your Windows partition and then select the full boot target and then click OK. I don't need to do that since this is a blank drive just for Fedora. I'm going to go ahead and click Next here. Now you have an option to choose what kind of software you want to install right off the install of the operating system. So you have Office and Productivity, you also have options for software development and web server. If you're using Fedora for a web server, you can go ahead and check that. Or if you intended to develop Linux software, go ahead and check the software development. You may want to select Fedora 11 i386 and i386 updates. That will include right off the install updates to your system, otherwise you can do it once you install your system. You may not be able to do this right now unless you're connected to an Ethernet port because the drivers for the wireless have not yet been installed, so we're going to go ahead and leave that alone. And then we'll, you can either also select if you want to customize the software that's going to be installed now or later. We're going to go ahead and do it later and keep the base software because most of the time you're not going to want to add anything unless you're doing specialized tasks. At this point, the install process will begin. It's going to go ahead and load the installer. And then the installer is going to go ahead and install all the files onto the hard disk that you selected earlier. This can take several minutes to first of all start the process and then another few minutes to actually install the system. I would suggest allocating about a half hour for this to happen. That's generally how long it takes. So you can go ahead and walk away from your computer and it'll go ahead and install for you. And then once it's done, it'll wait for you to come back. Alright guys, the Fedora has just finished installing, so we can go ahead and reboot our system. As you can see, the little loader has begun going across the bottom, and it'll crawl along just like it did in the Ubuntu. It's very similar to the loader bar in the There are a few post-install settings that you have to go ahead and do, so go ahead and click forward, forward. Now you need to create your user. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now you can click forward. This stuff should be correct. If it's not, go ahead and correct it to the current time. Click forward. And you can choose whether or not you want to send your hardware profile to Fedora's database. I'm going to go ahead and not send it. Now Fedora will proceed to boot into the desktop environment so you can use it like normal. Here's your login screen. Go ahead and log in. We'll hear a sound and then shortly the GNOME desktop environment, as you can see right here, will pop down from both sides. And there you go, you've successfully installed Fedora. You can go ahead and toy around with the settings a little bit if you like, but not completely necessary. This depends on what you want to do with it. So thank you for watching this video tutorial by Caseman Rules, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.